Hi everybody, Kevin Roy back with you um, with our virtual training classes. Today's class is going to be a strength and stretch. We're going to keep it uh, pretty short. We'll be about 45 minutes in length. Uh, we're going to get everything done, full body, legs, upper body. We're going to get a little warm up to begin with and then we're going to get you on the ground and we'll do some stretching and finish up on the ground. Today all we're going to be using is tubing. Um, you got a couple options if you're at home. Tubing works really well. Different resistance um, colors means different um, tension. You can also use what's called a TheraBand. So both of these will work. Um, I'll use a, kind of a combination of both so that uh, you get an idea of uh, how to use both. But basically any of these will work for today. You're also going to need a mat. So we have, uh, I have my mat. We're going to get it on the ground uh, later on during the class towards the end uh, as our cool down stretching. So there'll be lots of stretching, lots of core, lots of everything today. So let's get going. We're gonna start with a bit of a warm up because um, before we do any kind of resistance training, you want that, that initial warm up. You want that core temperature to go up. It'd make your workout go a lot smoother, less um, chances of getting injured, um, and also uh, your workout will be more efficient if you're warmed up as opposed to if you just start pushing uh, when you're cold. So for our warm up, we're gonna keep it really simple, really quick, just because time restraints. So we're going to just start with a basic march and if you're at home set it nice and tall you don't need your equipment to start so you can put that to the side. Um, if you're on a hardwood floor you can also do this on a mat. It gives you a little more cushioning. I'm not going to do it on the mat today but any kind of walking it nice and tall marching it out using your arms. Right? If we open up those legs nice and wide and keep that march you're opening up those hips. You're kind of feeling those hips warming up. Staying nice and tall all right, not leaning forward, not hunching. It's a good reminder to pull your shoulder blades back every now and then. That'll kind of keep you tall and straight. All right, nice and tall for four, three, two, and one. We're gonna bring it back in the middle. We're gonna keep it nice and tight. Feet are really tight together. We're gonna do what's called a V-step. Everybody at home who's taking my classes knows this one. We're gonna go wide out to a narrow back. So we're gonna come forward wide, push it back narrow wide, narrow, open, and close. You want to push off with that first leg, pushing back, warming up those knees, nice and big. Knees are always bent, tall, strong, and then we're going to switch to the lead leg. So we're going to switch to the left leg, lead legs out, nice and big. You can get your arms involved, opening, closing, Opening, closing, nice and big, open, close, tall, three, two, and one. Back to the march again, back to the middle. This time what I want you to do is open up again wide, hold it in nice and tall, and I want you to shift your weight side to side. Shift, shift, tapping your toe, shifting that weight. I want to push out to the sides, quarters out, push. Push, push, stretch in the shoulder, stretch in the arms, reach up nice and high to the corners, open up. You're trying to stretch everything out. Reach, reach, nice and big. And then I want you to push it forward. Push, push. Now you're gonna keep that wide feet, keep your feet where they are, and we're going to what's a basic squat. I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see what we're doing. So for our squat, we're gonna push our bum back and we're gonna stand up. I'm pushing my arms out in front of me, creates a little counterbalance. And by pushing out, I want you to stay on those heels. Don't come onto your toes, stay back on those heels. That in turn will keep your knees behind your toes. So that's where you want them. Breathe in as you go down, breathe out as you come up. Slow and controlled. Try to sit into those hips. You're allowed to lean forward with this one. It's a squat, so pretend you're sitting in a chair. Breathe in down, exhale up. Breathe in, breathe out. Two more, one, and two. Let's go back to our march. Sit up nice and tall again. Rolling those shoulders back, squeezing those shoulder blades behind you. Staying tall. Always remember lifting your head to the ceiling is a good cue to remember. Especially when you're warming up or doing anything standing. You want to keep that strong spine, tall spine at all times. Nice and big. Three, two, 
and one. Remember your feet together, and we're gonna do step outs. And we're gonna do what's called our modified jumping jack. We're gonna warm up those arms. So kicking it out, lift the arms. Kick it out. Nice and big, nice and tall. Good. Reach out further if you want to make it harder. Really reaching those hands up together above you. Then bring them in front of you. Pushing them in together. Push. Squeeze those shoulder blades as you come behind you. Squeeze back, squeeze, squeeze. Nice and tall for four, three, two, and one. I want you to go nice and wide. We're going to do butt kicks. This is a dynamic stretch. You want to feel the pull in your knees and your quadriceps as you do this. I'm going to do a bicep curl while I'm doing this. And as I'm kicking my butt up, I'm pulling my knees back slightly, creating a nice stretch through the front of your leg. And that's a nice butt kick. Dynamic stretching, right? We're not holding the quad stretch. We're not holding this. We're dynamically we're kicking our butts. This is the kind of stuff you want to do before your workouts. The slow dynamic or the slow static stretches that we're going to do at the end, you always want to do those towards the end. Three, two, one. Next one is high knees. Pulling them up. Touching each knee at the top. Some people in my classes like to clap their hands underneath. All right? Just avoid hunching to clap your hands. Try to stay tall. And if you can touch your hands underneath, that's great. You don't have to. You can touch your knee or you can touch the top of your knee or give your hands out in front of you and give yourself something to aim for, right? Aim for those high hands. Getting those knees up. You notice I'm opening up my hips now. Pointing my knees out to 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Again, warming up through the hips. Four, three, two, and one. Back to your regular march. Good, nice and easy with the march now. No big quick movements here. And then we're gonna shake out those legs. All right, good stuff. Our first stretch, we're gonna bring your right leg forward, left leg stays back. I want you to take a deep breath in and pull back, lift that front toe. As you exhale, I want you to sweep that foot and raise your arms. We'll do that again. Deep breath in, pull that toe up, bum is back. Exhale, reach those arms. Deep breath in, as you pull those arms back, feel that stretch. Exhale, reach your arms. Two more, breathe in, pull those arms back, exhale, reach your arms. Last one, breathe in, feel that stretch, feel that stretch. Exhale, and release. We'll do the other side, so now we're gonna bring our left leg forward, right leg back, and again, lifting that front toe, pushing your bum back as you breathe in. Exhale to the top. Breathe in as you pull it back. Exhale as you reach. Again, feel that stretch. Pull that bum back. Pull those arms back. Exhale. And two more. Make sure you keep your head up. Out through the mouth. One more. Deep breaths. In through the nose. Get that oxygen in. Exhale. Up to the top. Good. Roll it out. Shake it out. Awesome. Quick little warm-ups from our feet to our shoulders. We're going to start with heel lifts. Real basic exercise, real important exercise for ankle mobility and ankle strength. We're walking all day, so we want to keep those ankles nice and strong. All we're doing is we're lifting up to our tippy toes, coming back and lifting our toes. Heels go up, come down, toes come up. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, nice and tall. Good for balance as well. Stand on those tippy toes. Two more, one, and two. Good, we're gonna plant those feet nice and wide, and we're gonna do some hulas. So with your feet planted, we're just gonna move the hips forward and back. Those feet should be rooted into the ground, so they're not moving at all, just your hips are moving, and now, You'll notice my torso can start to rotate. I'm starting to move forward, pushing my hips back, stretching it out. I'm going to go nice and slow and controlled. You don't want to go too fast with this one. And then we're going to stop, and we're going to go the other way. 
Again, keeping those big circles through the hips, through the torso, breathing nice and big. Oh, good, nice big stretch as you come forward, really feel that pull through the hamstrings. And one, one last warm up, arms are out in front of us, or the side of us, and we're gonna do little circles. Small little circles just to warm up those shoulders. We're gonna start with some kind of warm up stuff for the bands, so we'll get those shoulders going in a little bit as well. Nice and big. And then we're making it bigger. Nice big circles, nice and tall. Big motion, right? We're trying to get that big movement through those arms. I want you to stop there. I want you to go the other way. Big circles the other way. So now we're reaching behind us. Nice and big. Breathing. Feeling that stretch of the chest and the shoulders. Deep breath in. Exhale. And done with the warm up. That's going to be our warm up from now. If you need a little break, you can pause this video. If not, we're going to keep going. We're going to need two beans to start. I'm going to start with the two bean. I kind of I'll shift over to the uh, TheraPad so you can kind of see how it all works. But they basically do the same thing. Um, the only difference is these have handles, which you don't always have to use. You can also just use the tubing. So I went with red, kind of a medium tension, really is up to you. Um, start with a lighter resistance. If you do have resistance um, ch choices, keep it light for the first little bit and then uh, increase it. I can tell you when we're going to need a little heavier bats. Okay, so. Or just stick with the same one, it's up to you. Now, well, here we go. We're gonna start with a nice little rotator cuff warm up. And all you're gonna do is bring your palms up in front of you. We're also gonna work balance throughout this video, guys. And if you're finding your balance isn't very good, and if I tell you to do a tandem stand, and you're not very comfortable with that, make sure you do this around a wall or, um, or a couple tables between you. Just because we don't want you falling, we don't want you hurting yourself. So you're gonna notice I, I throw in a lot of balance in this class. It is fall, so winter is coming. We wanna get that balance up. Uh, before the winter falls and before uh, the ice starts to hit us. So we want to really work on that balance, create that balance at the beginning of the fall here, and then uh, as, as it goes on to winter, you guys will be like uh, mountain goats out there. All right, palms up. I'm gonna do a tandem stance. I'm gonna put my left foot in front of right. All right, so left in front of right, shoulders are back, palms are up, and you've got your tubing or your theraband by the middle. And all I want you to do is open. And then close. It's a small little movement. All I'm doing is breathing in as I open, or exhaling as I open, breathe in as I come down. Breathe, exhale as you open, breathe in as you come down. Now, nice and small movement. Don't over rotate, don't try to stretch out those shoulders and hurt yourself. Very important that your elbows stay nice and tucked to your side and you work on your balance. Apparently I need to work on that too. Open and close. With that tandem stack, work on our balance and close. You're gonna work that into your shoulder. You'll feel that right through your shoulder. Nice and tall. Remember, pull those shoulder blades back and down. Exhale. Two more. One. And two. Open and close. If you're finding there's too much resistance, you can always open up a little wider, create less resistance. If you find it too easy, bring your hands closer together and you'll get a little more, okay? We're gonna rotate those palms down now. I'm gonna go a little wider with this one. We're also gonna change feet. So I'm gonna put the right foot in front of left. I think that's right. Arms out in front of you and about nose height. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my arms, squeezing my shoulder blades behind me and releasing. Right, working the balance, squeezing the shoulder blades behind me, and release nice and slow. With the TheraBands, you gotta remember that most of the resistance is at the bottom, so you're more likely to release that. So you wanna control that release as you bring it up. Exhale, pull, squeeze those shoulder blades, lift that chest, and down. Stay nice and tall. Okay, I'm doing that tandem stand. If you find your tandem stand is not very good, you can also do it with your feet together, a little easier. Still working that balance. If you find the tandem stand is way too easy, let's lift that foot. Squeeze those shoulder blades and lift. Two more, one, exhale, and last one, exhale, squeeze, and release. Gonna give you a little bit of a breather for those shoulders, roll them out. 
Good work. So we're gonna get the legs going a little bit. We're gonna work our pushes. So I'm gonna put the banner on my back. I'm gonna grab that tubing underneath my armpits. The more I grab, the more resistance I'm gonna get. All right, the further out I grab, the less I'll get. We're gonna just do a basic punch. But you guys are professionals out there, so we're gonna add a little squat to that, get our legs going a little bit. So the first move is a squat. So you're gonna bring it down to a squat. As you stand, I want you to push your arms forward and touch your hands. Bring it down to a squat, pushing your bums back. Exhale, and bring your hands up front. Breathe in as you go down. Exhale, as we punch. Okay, so we're getting the squat in action. My bum's going back. I'm exhaling at the top and get my chest. Really important that you watch the butt goes back. Exhale and come forward. You'll notice my knees don't lock at the top. So when I come up to a standing position, you don't want your knees to snap. That little snap is not good. You want to keep a slight bend in there. Your knees actually twist if you lock your knees. And so you don't want to lock your knees. Keep your knees slightly bent. You're going to give you the most uh, stable position. And you're working those legs, working those arms. Two more. Breathe in. Exhale. Push. Last one. Breathe in. Exhale. And push. Good stuff. Rolling that out nice and big. Good work. So that's a nice little warm up position for the shoulders, opening and closing. We're going to do a little leg warm up. We did the squats there, but that was just body weight. So let's step on your tubing. When you step on your tubing, you've got to remember, make sure that you have equal pressure or equal resistance on both sides. Also, A for if you're going to do bicep curls or any upper body stuff, but also to keep right your shoulders square. So making sure one side's not pulling it a little hard on the other. So it might take a couple um, positions of your feet to figure out where the best place is. But once you find that position, you're going to go nice and wide, both shoulder width. I slightly point my toes out because I'm a little bit taller and I'm not very flexible. So that allows me to go deeper. All right, but you don't want to have one toe out and one toe in. You want to make sure if you're going to angle them, make sure they're both angled out and make sure your knees are tracking over your shoelaces. So for our first movement is a squat. I'm going to wrap that band around my hands a few times and add some extra resistance because the resistance is through your arms down to your feet. So we're going to push them back, breathe in, exhale and stand, breathe in, exhale, stand. Especially with the TheraBand, wrapping it around your hand a couple times allows you to grip it a lot easier as well. Breathe in, exhale. Making sure it's under your, in front of your heel and behind your toes. So you want to right into that nice spot in the bottom of your feet. Breathe in, exhale. A good cue in squatting, and I'll say it a few times tonight, is keep your weight on your heels. So stay back. If you come down to the bottom and you're able to lift your toes like this, toes are up, that means that my position's correct. That means I'm sitting back enough. If I'm coming forward, my heels are gonna wanna come up, and that's wrong. That's putting pressure on your knees, pushing your butt back, and exhaling. Now we're, right, now we're just working that core, lower back, glutes, legs. Two more, breathe in, exhale. And again, breathe in, and exhale up. Good, we're gonna keep that banner on our hands, and we're just gonna do some shoulder shrugs. What we're gonna do is, instead of shrugging, you'll see the guys in the gym with the big weights and they just go up and down. That's gonna kinda of work your neck a little bit, but you wanna get create that rolling sensation. So push your shoulders forward, up to the ears, and then back and down. You're going to get more work out of those um, the traps in the upper neck. And this is just to kind of get the blood back into the shoulders a little bit because we're going to do some, some shoulder work to start. Okay, nice big round. Circles. Good. So, next we're going to do some unilateral stuff. To do unilateral means we're going to do one-sided. Uh, you're basically going to let go of one and hold onto your hand if you have two meters. If you have the TheraBand, which is what I'm going to switch to right now, the difference is, is you just have to work your grip a little more because you actually have to grip on to what you're using. So for the TheraBand, you got to grip it so you don't have that handle. That's the only difference. So basically it's the exact same movements I'm going to do for the TheraBand can be done with the tubing and vice versa. Okay, so right hand with your band, with your TheraBand, whatever you have, 
and you're going to lay that on the ground. This is nice and thick, so it gives you a good base to stand on. I'll try to center myself better for you guys. And what you're going to do is you're going to, we're going to start with lateral raises for the shoulder. You're going to need very little resistance. So to do that, you stand as far away from that handle or from that hand position as you can. If you need more resistance, oh yeah, physics, right? We got that. So find that spot. We usually do about 12 reps of everything, guys. So make sure you can do at least 12. We may do more. Um, I mean, just not be counting, but the whole idea is about 12 reps is a good number. So elbows always bent, standing nice and tall, and we're going to lift. So our hand and our elbow is both shoulder height and bring it down. Okay, I'm gonna angle myself, exhale up, inhale down. Most common problem we see with this one is the shrug. As people lift, they're trying to help themselves by lifting that shoulder to the ear. Don't do that, bad. You wanna keep that shoulder down as you exhale up and nice and slow release. Just like I said at the beginning, the most resistance is at the top. It's really easy to just let it go, but I want you guys not to do that at home. I want you to control that coming down. Bring it up, exhale. Control that coming down. You can see my hand goes higher than my shoulder slightly. It's the elbow that you don't want to go higher than your shoulder. Right? Create that elbow. Get that elbow lift and bring it down. Exhale up. You also notice my wrist is nice and straight on the hand that's lifting. Really working that grip, working those wrist muscles, not letting it flex or extend. One more, up, exhale, and slowly come down. Really isolate the deltoids, your shoulder muscles. You should really feel that in there. Okay, we're gonna roll that out and we're gonna do the other side. So we're just gonna flip it over. Try to find that same resistance you just used on that right side for the left. You don't want to be any further away and make it a little easier. You want to try to create as much uh, symmetry as possible on both sides. Elbows are slightly bent. Same move, nice and tall. You can see I have my feet together. That's great. You can also open up if your balance isn't so great. Feet together. Work your core a little more as well because I have less base. Hopefully you guys are doing this now. We're lifting the elbow. Because I have less base now, it's trying to pull me over and, and you're going to use your core. So you have no choice but to use your core when you're doing this kind of stuff. This is why we love the TheraBand. It's also why we like the unilateral, doing one side at a time. You get that extra core work without doing any extra crunches. Bring it up, exhale, lift the elbow, inhale, bring it down. Exhale, lift the elbow, inhale, bring it down. Good. Stay nice and tall. Always remind yourself to pull back. Especially if you start to angle it a little bit. That's not going to hurt you if you angle that arm a little bit to the side uh, or in front of you. It's going to pull you forward though. So you got to make sure you correct that with your nice tall spine. Exhale up. Inhale down. Small little movement. Lots of work on the shoulders. A really good sculpting exercise. Exhale up. Let's go one more. Here we go. Up. Hold at the top. Make sure there's a little pause. Control it down. Good stuff. There's your little shoulder move for the day. Roll that out. Good, good, good. We're going to do our pulls next. So what you're going to do is you're going to actually go back to the right arm. So we're going to be switching back and forth quite a bit. Once we get on the ground, it will be a little bit less. Um, this time I want lots of resistance, guys. So I want you to step really close to that handle. You can see how much I've really tightened that, that move. So I'm going to go with my right arm, lay it down, step it off with my left foot. Then I'm going to slide my right foot back and you should feel that tension immediately. What we're going to do is a bent over roll. This is a tricky one. You want to be very careful with your back with this one. If you're going to come forward, <coughs> you can put your hand on your knee, keep your head up neutral, and I want you to pull and squeeze that shoulder blade and release. Pull and squeeze that shoulder blade and release. Exhale as you pull. You can see I keep my head up. You can also see I keep my elbow nice and tight to my body. I'm squeezing that right shoulder blade, okay? Slight rotation's okay, so you can see I slightly rotate at the top. That's allowed. Also, my wrist, nice and straight. My hand stays under my elbow, keeps it nice and safe. A lot of people will tend to pull, 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 and then use their wrist at the end. 
Try not to do that. You're not going to kill yourself or hurt yourself too badly over the but over the long run. And if you keep doing it wrong, eventually that wrist will get to, well, creates carpal tunnel and that kind of stuff in your wrist. We don't want that. Squeeze it back. Good. If you're really professional, take that hat off your arm, your leg, make it a little harder, a little more core orientated, and obviously you can do a standing, right, raised leg style. I mean, whatever you want to do. These are very basic exercises, but really important moves. Squeezing back. This is for your arm and back. Two, and one more. Squeeze, and release. Good, we're gonna go to the left side. Grabbing that handle. Remember, resistance. Try to keep it similar or as close as you can to the other side. Really step it on that. Get that resistance on there. Get a little bit more. There it is. So now my right foot's on there. My left hand has the tubing or the theraband. Slide that left leg back. Lean forward, loading that front right leg, and then it's a pull. Really good movement. Squeezing it back and releasing. Get elbows tight to my side. I'm slightly rotating as I come up. Rotation gives you more squeeze in that upper back. Same rules before. Don't bring that um, shoulder to your ear as you pull. Keep your shoulder down and pull back. Breathe in as you go down. Exhale as you pull. Good. Keep going. I'm releasing my leg. Make it a little harder. Creating more core as I'm holding myself up. Keeping my chin up, make sure you're looking up. Don't look down, kind of force you, you may have more tendency to round your back. We want to stay nice and tall and strong. Squeeze. Two more. One. And two. Drop it down and shake it out. Good stuff, guys. Rolly, rolly, rolly. We did our pulls, all sorts of fun stuff. We're gonna end with some legs, then we're gonna get you on the ground, do some push ups. Because everybody knows me, I like to do our push ups. Uh, it's a great exercise. If you're not very good at push ups, then you wanna do the push ups. You don't wanna ignore the push up. Uh, we're gonna start with our squat, or I'm sorry, lunges for our legs. I'm gonna use the band to add a little resistance. Um, it's optional. But using the band will give you a little more oomph. If you're gonna do it without the band, and I'll do it without, you're basically just dropping that back knee and coming straight up. I hit my knee on the ground, don't have to do that. Exhale, but the same uh, rule applies to squatting. Keep your weight back on your heels. As you go down, which will in turn keep your knee back and everything straight through your, your fib tip so that your weight's not coming forward on that knee. So staying back. And if find with a lunge, if you do it wrong and you don't go wide enough with your stance, your tendency is going to come forward. If you widen that a lot more, then you're going to stay back a little bit, okay? So we're going to start with our right leg. I'm going to use the TheraBand for a little more resistance, so I'm going to step on it. A couple options with this one, we're going to change it up. You can wrap your hand around, create more resistance. You can just keep it like this if you'd like. Or, for you hardcores, we're going to bring it around your arms. Okay, really safe and it's really comfortable to hold it there. Really adds a lot of resistance. So that left leg goes back and we go straight down and exhale up. Breathe in as you go down, exhale as you come up. You're gonna notice with this one now, as opposed to a squat where you lean forward, when you're lunging or split squatting, you're staying tall. Shoulders are over the hips, so there's no leaning. Straight down and straight up. Breathe in, breathe out. If your balance isn't very good with the split, you can stagger that a little bit. So that means stick out that leg a little further out to the side. That way you're not straight on. Straight down, straight up. Four more, one. Woo, if you get tired, you can release that as well. Just keep going, two, three, and last one. Four, up, stand, and release. And let's shake up that right leg. Woo. All right, we know what's next. We do the left leg. So, left leg is on, going back into here. So instead of up in here, I'm gonna give you guys the other version for you guys watching at home. I'm just gonna wrap around my head. Same movement, arms at my side, back heels tall, and I'm going straight down and up. 
Breathe in, breathe out. Again, not banging my knee on the ground, but you want to get as low as you can, right? You don't want to do tiny little ones, because if you do that, you're not going to get the glutes going, you're going to get less muscles working, so you want to go deep. If the band's too much, release the band. If that's too much, hold it onto a countertop or hold it onto a, a sink, helping yourself up, okay, so you can do it assisted as well. Lots of options with the split lunge, really good exercise. Split squat, not split lunge. Really working those glutes, working your balance. Three, inhale down, exhale, two, and last one. Shoulders back, down, up, and shake it out. Woo, all right. We're gonna get down on the ground next. So if you need a breather, you can pause, grab some water. I'm gonna go a little easier with getting the mat out and everything. So we're going to use your mat, we're going to also use your tubing, so keep their tubing close. Good work. So we're going to finish on the ground, we're going to stay on the ground the whole time. And we're going to start with a push-up. Always doing our push-ups in this class. It's a basic movement, it's a fitness test that we use with older adults, we use it with everybody, so you need to be able to do push-ups. It's kind of an indicator of our upper body strength. A couple ways to do it. You guys know them. Obviously, the knee version on the knees, bring your chest down, push it through here. You can do it from the toes, whatever you want to do. You can do a combination of both. If you're finding you're really having trouble getting down there, that's okay. Allow that. You can also do it against the wall. So up against the wall with your feet back, doing a wall push-up. Um, lots of variations of this one. Make sure you find one that you can do at least eight reps. Eight eight good clean reps. Um, if you're not doing eight reps, you're not gonna get enough of the resistance uh, benefits from it. Um, and also, you wanna make sure you're doing big reps, uh, lots of range of motion, because if you're doing push-ups like this, you're actually only working a bit of your elbow muscles, so a bit of your triceps. If you go deeper, then you create more of the chest workout, more shoulders, okay? So you're gonna get more full body out of that. So make sure your range of motion is good. Make sure you can do at least eight reps. So if you have to do from the, from, the, from the wall, that's totally fine. On a countertop, just make sure you don't slip. So make sure you're working, wearing nice sticky shoes. Uh, carpet's really tough to do it on, so I prefer a hardwood. All right, another version, obviously, for all you hardcores out there, putting that banner on your back and adding, eventually adding resistance to your push-up, you can do add resistance as well. Really is up to you. I want 12 good ones, guys. Hands on the mat, but just wider than your shoulders, basically. Knees are back, toes are back, butt is down, and here we go for 12, okay? I'll do it from the knees for you guys. Breathe in, and exhale as you push. Breathe in, exhale, good. You can see, I'm getting my chest to the ground. The fitness test is actually touching your chin to the mat. Uh, you're at home, so you're using your own mat, so feel free to touch your chin. I'm not going to use touch my chin on this one, but essentially that's as low as you should be able to go. Exhale up, breathe in, exhale up, two more, one, and last one, two, good stuff. While we're on the ground, you're going to notice we're going to do a little bit of stretching while we do our abs and while we do our other workouts. So uh, try to keep up a little bit. So we're going to do a little bit of a child's pose to stretch our back. Bring yourself bum back to your heels. Arms stay in front of you, and we're going to tuck our head. You want you to round your back. Typically, with this kind of exercise, or most exercises, we don't want you to round your back unless you're stretching, unless you're doing a child's pose. Or a, or a cat stretch, or a cat pose, or cat stretch. Rounding that back, nice deep breaths while you're in that rounded back. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Then the opposite is your back extension. Dropping your hips, lifting your head, and arching your back. Arcing your back. And that's a back extension, so it's the opposite, right? This is the back flexion, back extension. Really important stretch at home, guys. The back extension. Osteoporosis Canada wants you doing this one every single day because it really opens up the spine, 
really opens up the lumbar part of your back. So if you sit a lot, really good stretch. You can also modify it by going just on your elbows. So try to create that good dip in your back. Really important for spinal mobility. Uh, work on that one for sure at home. Our stretch is typically gonna hold for about 30 seconds. Um, we're gonna do some core here. We're gonna start with a plank. But uh, if you notice that I don't hold it as long as 30 seconds, my apologies. We're just trying to run through these as quick as we can here. So on our elbows, we're gonna do our plank. Feet are together. Planks can be done on the knees. Planks can be on the toes, whatever you prefer. Remember, the important thing here is to keep your head up and keep your body low. You don't wanna be up in the air like this or you wanna be sagging down low like this. You want a nice straight line. That's why using a mirror is sometimes uh, helpful. If you have a mirror at home, use your mirror. If not, here we go. We'll try it this way. So hands underneath, elbows underneath your shoulders, toes underneath your ankles, nice and tall, and I just want you to lift. And when you lift, you should immediately feel that kind of gravity pulling your hips down. You're holding yourself up, you're breathing, don't hold your breath, and just hold that position. It makes it a little easier if you go a little wider with the feet. You can make it a little harder by bringing your feet together. You can make it even harder by going to a single foot. Lots of options. We've got another 10 seconds. Breathe through that. Good. Nice and straight back. For three, two, one. Bring it to the knees. We're gonna go back to a child's pose one more time. Bring your knees in. This time we're going to put our palms up through that child's pose. Tucking your head, palms are up, really opens up your upper back. Nice deep breaths, in through the nose, out through the mouth. One more deep breath, and exhale. Excellent job guys. We're going to go on our backs. Make sure your tubing is close before you lie down, because we're gonna use it for assisted stretching today. Um, so keep it tight, either one works, the tubing or the, or the TheraBand. All right, so we're we'll start with a little core exercise and a kind of a dynamic stretch. You're gonna cross your right leg over left. You're gonna put your hands on your side, and all I want you to do is lift your legs, and as you lift your legs, I want your butt to slightly come off the mat. I'm using my hands to push into that mat as I lift, and slowly come back to center. Okay, here we go. Lying down nice and straight, deep breath in. Exhale up, inhale down. You'll notice my tailbone comes off the mat. I pause at the top for just a split second, maybe a second. And I'm controlling that with my core up, feeling that stretch in the hip. A little bit of everything. Nice, good stretch. Working that core, working that abs. Exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale up. You want to make it harder, bring your shoulder blades up as you come up. And bring it down to so create more of a crunching motion. Okay, two more. One. And two. Keep that leg crossed. Don't uncross that right leg. What we're gonna do, we've already done this stretch for your piriformis, we're gonna drop it down. And if you notice, as soon as I drop it down, it makes me twist. So my right foot's on the ground, so I'm gonna take my left arm, grab my right knee, pull it towards the ground. As I do that, I'm gonna turn my head the opposite way. So I'm gonna look to the right, reach my right arm down, oh, and hold that stretch. That's a bum, lower back stretch, IT band. Because I'm reaching my arm out, I'm getting my chest stretched, and we're breathing. If you're not feeling that in the bum, use your left leg to drive that right foot up a little higher. Ooh, the higher that foot goes, the more pull you're gonna get in your deeper, uh, your deeper glutes, your glute min, and your glute med. So really holding that stretch releasing so you want to relax that means don't hold any tension and don't use your hip to hold it there just keep everything relaxed and just let this left arm do the stretch for three deep breath in as you exhale 
release. Good, let's switch sides. So we're gonna do the left leg over right. My hands are at my side. We're gonna do our reverse crunches again. Here we go, bring it up. And slowly lower. Exhale up. Come down nice and slow. Notice my butt. My, my tailbone comes off the mat. If I'm just lifting to here, that's fine. I'm gonna get a good stretch, but I'm not gonna get the ab work I want. You wanna lift those hips. Use your hands to help lift and push into the mat. Really engage in that core. Push and down. Push. Good. Four more. One. Inhale down. Three more. Two. Last two. Lose my shirt up. And last one, here we go. Up, squeeze, release. Keep that leg crossed. We're gonna drop it to the right. Shoulder blades are down, all right? My left hip can come up because I'm rotated. Right arm grabs the left knee, pulls it down. I turn my head to the left, reaching my left arm to my side, above my shoulder, and you're gonna get that full stretch through your glutes, through your lower back. Reaching and breathing, nice deep breaths into the nose, out to the mouth. If you want to give it a little more push to the knee, coming down, create more rotation, more bum stretch. Nice deep breaths, folks, nice deep breaths. Relax the body, let this right arm do all the work. Let all that tension, right? Don't hold yourself up with your hip. You want to relax into that stretch. Let the arm do the stretching. Let it pull that left knee down for three. Deep breath in. Exhale out and relax. Good job, guys. All right, if you don't have your tubing, grab it. This is the time. We're gonna do some uh, hamstring stretches with it. So we'll do assisted hamstring stretch. Really simple stuff. Um, really nice to do, if, especially with the TheraBand works really well. The tubing works as well. I just find with the tubing, you may want to, um, when tying around your foot, you may want to cross it so you don't lose that and it flips you in the face because I have seen that before. The third band, it's a little flatter, a little wider, a little more surface area, so you can actually put that right on your foot and it should hold pretty well. So, right foot around, you're gonna lean back and you're gonna grab this right leg by the third band. This bottom left leg, toes should be pointed straight up and it should be nice and straight and even. My knee is slightly bent as you can tell. You can walk it if you'd like, but keep it a little bent at the beginning is good. Kind of get things stretched out and then when you're ready, start to walk that foot out. You want to be relaxed through that. Again, always relax through that hip. You're going to feel that stretch to the back of the leg. Okay, that's your first hamstring stretch. You want to keep holding that one. Everybody else wants to try another one. I want you to pull it across slightly. So from here, I'm just pulling it across my body. Not, so my hip comes off, I'm still keeping my bum down, but now you're gonna feel that little bit on the lateral side of your legs, your outside hamstrings, bit of your knee. Oh, a nice big stretch. Really good long stretch, you wanna hold that. And then the third stretch is gonna be your inner groin, right? So you're coming up to the side, holding that, relaxing the hip, and just let that arm hold. Hopefully you guys can see me at home. And your nice deep breaths, relaxing into the nose, out to the mouth, feeling that stretch through your inner groin, hamstring as well. It's all connected, it's all one muscle group. And then release. We're gonna switch to the left leg. All I'm gonna do is feed my left leg in, my right foot goes flat to the ground, and we pull that left. Keep it nice and line. Remember that right toe should be up. You don't want to drop that toe because that opens up your hips a bit. You want to keep everything straight and in line. Holding that there, my toe is pointed towards me slightly. Be careful if you have a tubing, it will tend to roll up at this point. So really drive that heel to the ceiling. Feel that stretch to the hamstring. Okay, then what we do is we slightly pull it across our body to the right. Holding ourselves straight, we're not dropping and leaning. Right, we're just pulling it across slightly and just hold. 
feel that outside leg, that's gonna be your IT band and your outside hamstrings, bit in your hip. Really good stretch if you walk a lot, if you sit a lot. And then the last one is you're gonna flare it out to the outside and just relax. This is a really good relaxing one as you hold it with your left arm. Just relax those hips and as you relax into that stretch, you really feel that pull from the hamstring. Nice deep breaths. Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. All right, guys, we're almost there. We're gonna sit up nice and tall. I noticed we're running out of time. We may have gone a little longer than 45. I apologize. Bring your tubing and bring it behind your back. And you're gonna lock those hands behind you. We're gonna pull those shoulder blades together and then you're gonna lift that band off your back. Lift and squeeze. Hold it nice and tall. You're gonna look up to the ceiling. Extend the spine. Nice and tall, deep breaths. Ah, uh, and exhale, release, roll that shoulders. Good, take your right arm, pull it across your body. Reaching that right arm, stretch and open up the shoulder blades. Nice, wiggle those fingers. And let's try the other side, pull it across. Again, 30 seconds on each one. I may be going a little quick at the end here, but feel free to slow down, repeat these. Really important stretches, guys. Opening up the shoulder blade, stretching out the shoulders. Good, and then we're gonna finish on our feet. Nice and tall. We're gonna bring our feet together. We're gonna take some deep breaths into the nose, reaching up to the ceiling, and then exhale down to the toes. Coming back up at the end. Oh, really feel that pull everywhere. Roll the shoulders out. Nice and tall. Put your hands together, give your instructor an applause. I can't hear you, I'm assuming you're all cheering at home. Namaste, have a great day, and thank you for joining me for Strength and Stretch. My name is Kevin Roy, we'll end it here. Namaste, have a good one, thanks.